So what is going on dammers, my name is Mehul and welcome to your 12th Angular 6 tutorial in which we're gonna take a look at how to make HTTP requests with your Angular component or with your Angular services and uh, let's get started. Alright, so in this tutorial we're gonna discuss about something known as HTTP client module in angular with which we can make requests with uh, the angular application right so what this http client is how to actually make http request using a service because that's an appropriate way as angular suggests and uh, getting response back is also a task a little bit of task here in angular and uh, and we would see how to actually cast that response so that you actually get you can actually access values you want to would come to that and something about rxjs as well so let's start okay so starting with importing the http client how do we do that well to do that what we're going to do is go to our module file and right here we're going to import our http client module which would be http client module from angular common and http there we have it so this client module as i said modules would go into imports would go right here and then what we have is that now we can inject this particular module as a dependency in our service so let's just create or actually we already have a service record service here so we're going to make use of that service only so if we take a look at record.service.ts right here you can see so what we can do is now we are injecting a service inside injecting a module inside the service so we're going to import this again http right there and this injectable decorator i guess i missed that in the last tutorial what it does is that this tells angular that this service can also have some injectables in it so we need that decorator right there so i'm gonna do a private inject of http and let's just call this http client because that's what it is and now we can access this dot http via this dot http right i mean the http client via this dot http okay so how do we actually get the um how do we actually make a json request so first of all um let me just get it out of the way and what I'm gonna do is uh, let's just say I go here and what I do is I let's just say I create a test directory here test and I go inside that and what I'm gonna do is just touch a file dot json file here and I can just paste this data which I have right here uh, let's just put a curly brace with a key value here or let's just say my object something like this so that we can make a valid JSON out of it and that should be good now what we can do is run a very simple one two three four server here so now it is serving our JSON file right here and now if we take a look at the intro we can see one two three four right here and uh, data or what we have file.json right so you can see that we get our data so we are getting some error expected string so let's just fix that first Okay, so we have to put that actually in key value pairs, uh, encrypted, encoded as a string. So let's just do that really quick. File.json right here. Or what we can do instead is select all of these right here. 
and actually these records are duplicated right so we can just go with these two only these four only and oops so we have a problem but anyways so that is it or we can just get rid of these records right here and what we can do is uh, replace these with these and there we are so let's just keep it with these only and now we have a valid uh, JSON at our hands and and now what we have is localhost1234 hit enter and now if we take a look we can see that we get a valid JSON out of it cool all right now what we want is that we want to fetch this thing and get some data out of it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say um, this dot http dot get and then i'm gonna pass in or are we really writing http dot get and i'm gonna pass in the url so the url is http localhost one two three four then what we have is data dot or uh, file dot json right and once we have this thing what i want is uh, actually subscribe to this thing now what does this mean well um this is the subscription is uh, operator of rxjs which is reactive javascript and what this is is that it's it's just a way to handle asynchronous tasks so rxjs takes a completely different approach from whatever you have um, tried or used earlier if you haven't used rxjs obviously because the rxjs is based on a pipeline model so for rxjs an asynchronous request can be thought of as a pipe where um, your endpoint would emit certain events every time and you can subscribe to them right so in this case we have the event when um, this HTTP module will return us some data and we are subscribing to it. So that's pretty much it you need to know right now for RxJS. But we're going to discuss that later on in depth if we get some time. So yeah, so we have the subscribe. What we'll get in return is the data. So what I'm going to do is pretty much just console log. We got data right here okay so we are here and now in our app component we are injecting the service and we're getting the records right here so let's just see how this looks like in the browser so i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna go back one more time inspect the element go to console so what we have in here is oh okay no access control allow origin just a minute okay so to fix this what we can do quickly is uh, actually let's just see what we have we can change the file name to file.php and if we open this in <clears throat> vs code only so what we can do is actually say header access control allow origin the value of star and we should be good to go right and one more thing what we can do what we can say is content type application json here to send a json response and there we are uh unexpected header right so now if we do uh phps localhost 1234 hit enter reload the app now oh, it is oh we have not updated the app so we're going to change this from file.json to file.php hit save and There we are. So we have this object which contains information about 
our records, right? But there's a problem. Let's just see if we do data.obj, what happened? If I reload this now. Okay, so uh, this is not really a problem. It gives us the objects. But what we can do instead is that we can actually um, create an interface out of this thing. You can see that the linter gives us an error that property object does not exist on type object because that's not really a way to do this. Now, to do this, actually, what you have to do is create an interface which specifies what kind of um, response you're expecting. So, what we can do here instead is uh, um, we can create a kind of interface here interface and uh, let's just say my data which just says object is a type of object right and now I can do something like http.get and I want I'm expecting the kind of data to be returned as object which contains object right now this is a simple one so now if you take a look in the browser you can see that we got the response correctly all right now what i want to do is actually give this data back now how do we give this data back to our component so what we can do is instead of subscribing here i can actually subscribe right here right now if we save this thing and actually we would need to actually change this from here to our component file here and now if you take a look in the browser you can see that we still get the same response now what I want is I want to actually update this dot records this dot records is data.obj and we are good to go now so now we can just sit back and relax and see that it populates our data with the, the information so we get an error here but uh, we get to cannot find a different supporting object of type object ng4 only supports binding to iterables such as arrays okay So what we are missing here is that our records was an object initially, so it threw us an error, but now it should be fine. Yeah. So that is pretty much how you perform an HTTP request in Angular. And trust me, you're going to do this all the time when you're creating an application because um, you cannot obviously offload everything to client side at once. You need to perform HTTP requests again and again. So yeah, that's pretty much it, how you perform HTTP request and that's all for this tutorial and I'll see you then in the next one with some really awesome stuff again with Angular 6. And one more thing, if you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to receive instant notifications.